Hello everyone. Myself Dr. Ashwini Kumar. I'm a faculty of human anatomy. In the series of helping out first year MBBS student regarding the subject of anatomy, this is our second video where I'll be telling you about how to approach the diagrams in anatomy. Well, according to me, the five points which are very very important to draw the diagram effectively and to fetch the maximum marks out of it are one is the color coding that what color codes to be used, the outline of the diagram, labeling, orientation and the timing. So let's talk about all the five points very quickly. The first thing is the color coding. So when I say color coding, if we have a universal color code in the anatomy like artery is shown with a red color, vein is with the blue, the nerve is with a yellow. Now when I say nerve is with a yellow, the problem is that we usually draw the nerve obviously on the, on the white background. So the yellow color is hardly visible and we are not able to show the branches of the nerve the way we want it to. So my suggestion is and which is acceptable also that you can draw the nerve with the pencil and use a yellow color as a highlighter over that pencil which will like satisfy both things. So you are using a yellow color also and with the pencil you can show the direction of the nerve, nerve fiber and the branches. Fascia and ligament with the green, muscles with the brown, bones with the black and lymph nodes with the purple color. Apart from these any other structures in the anatomy you can use any color you want so there is no particular restriction on that. So you just like if you are drawing a transfer section of the brain stem and you have to show the different nuclei there. You can use a different color to show the different nuclei and that, that is, is very much acceptable. For the muscles and bone I need to suggest to you that when you draw a muscle don't try to fill up the entire muscle with a brown color rather than shade the, uh, shade the muscle and shade it in the direction of the muscle fiber. Like if you are drawing a pectoralis major muscle in, in a diagram just make sure that your, your orientation and uh, your shading goes in a horizontal way. So it looks like the pectoralis major muscle fibers are running transversely. Bones shown with a black color and again you don't have to fill any black or yellow color inside the bone just draw the outline and that is enough. So if you are drawing a scapula you just need to draw the outline of the scapula and that is more than enough. You don't have to fill in any color in the, in the bone. Now it doesn't matter these colors are shown in any atlas or any textbook of anatomy but when you have to write the answers you need to save on time as well. So do not engage in like coloring up the bones and all that and also try not to draw the lumen for blood vessels. When you are drawing an artery or the vein you don't have to draw the lumen of the artery or vein first and then color it up rather than you can use a, a different uh, thickness uh, the colors of different thickness to show the thicker artery and thinner artery. Let's say if you are showing a radial artery you can use a thicker shade of the red and if you are showing a, a, any superficial branch of the radial artery then you can use a thinner uh, shade of the red color. So rather than just drawing a lumen of the artery first with a pencil and then coloring it up that will just waste a lot of time only. Another thing in the diagram which is very very important is, is, the, uh, is the outline. Now why I am saying outline is important because maybe the, the things that you draw inside the diagram is technically correct but the outline always creates an impression. Now look at for this picture I drew the arterial arches here the superficial and deep palmar arch and exactly same superficial and deep palmar arch if you will see are also in this diagram. It is an exact just copy paste only. But because the outline of this diagram is, isn't impressive, so obviously examiner being a human being only, so they always obviously will have a certain sort of impression that this diagram is better than this one, although the structure, the, the technically the structure inside are absolutely the same. So one has to practice the outlines and again you don't have to uh, be a, a artist to draw all these outlines, you just need to practice the diagram especially of the hand I would say because they look a bit odd when you don't draw them well, hand, foot side of the face. Yeah. So uh, these are all, all especially the outline part which you need to pay attention to and and, and as I said it's it's just that ki when, you, when you draw the technically correct thing on a meticulously drawn schematic line diagram that obviously will help you fetch better marks. Another thing labeling well the probably the most important thing is the diagram is nothing without its labeling. When you look at the labeling in any atlas, well, if, whether it's a Netter's atlas or any real time Mapman's atlas, then you will see the labeling is like on both the sides, above, below and on both the sides because they have to label probably everything in there. Now when we are labeling for our answers, our labeling is very limited like 10 to 15 uh, labeling might be there on any, any, any diagram I would say. So I would say there are two important suggestions for the labeling that one try to keep your labeling toward the right side if possible. If there are too many labelings obviously you can do it on the other side also but try to keep it on the right side. And secondly when you label something and you put an arrow for it do not make it go through the diagram. Imagine if I have labeled this like 5-6 things over there and if I just draw the line within the diagram itself then the, all these structures will be overlapped with this pen pencil marks. And it will just create a confusion also and your neat and clean diagram will not look the same if those lines have been going from inside the diagram. 
So try to keep the, these, these pencil mark above and then stretch it toward the right side and, and label it. Obviously, there will be certain structure which you may have to mark in, inside, but try to avoid it as much as you can. And, and try to keep your labeling aligned also. I mean, if you let's say if you write ulnar arterial nerve here, and if I write the palmar is more on this side, then again, this is this will not look more impressive. See, this this is all about to create a good impression of the diagram. It's it's not that how you diagram how much your diagram is correct. If you've labeled the same thing above or below or on that side, then it would have been correct. But I'm giving you all these suggestions so that the diagram looks better and you could you could fetch more marks out of it. Another thing is orientation. Now, when I drew this diagram. This diagram is absolutely incomplete if first of all I do not mention that to what and where it is. Now I have to tell you that this is the palmar aspect of the wrist or the, the carpal region. And then orientation of the diagram is also very important which is which I've seen that you a student usually don't draw this orientation thing but one should. With every single diagram you should draw the four lines here and tell about the diagram that what is proximal, what is distal there, what is medial, what is lateral. And this again will create an impression on the examiner's head that okay this, this guy knows about that how uh, how this orientation is whether it is right side or left side and what exactly he wants to show it in and the last probably and the most important thing is the timing of the diagram some people tend to draw the diagram at the very end which is to me is not acceptable because especially for the long questions now let's say you're att attempting a long question on the shoulder joint and we've written everything about the shoulder joint first about the capsule and the ligaments and the supports and the muscles and blood vessels and everything and after that very at the very end then you're drawing a diagram for the shoulder joint showing everything together like the capsule and the ligaments and blood vessel well that won't help because the examiner have already read the theory and probably may have picked up on your the on your mistakes also and now it is already it's too late because now he's looking at your diagram where you already seen the mistake in your in your theory and he obviously will contemplate that okay this is something that the student doesn't know about and even if it is marked correctly in the diagram that still it could it could be anything so the point is if you draw the diagram first after writing the introduction to that question if you draw the, draw the diagram very much in the beginning only and label everything there so once the examiner will look look at the diagram he automatically will create an impression in his head about that how much you know about it if your diagram is correct then like if if i'm an examiner if i'm reading your answer if your diagram is correct then i will tend to look at what you've written not with the same intensity which i would have done if there is no diagram in there so I will like pick on your mistake a little less if the diagram is given in the beginning only and it will create an impression on my mind if, if a nice neat and clean meticulous diagram is there it will always already have an impression in my head okay the student knows about the topic and with that impression then I'll start reading the rest of the answer which is always for your benefit only. So see, these are a few things that you should keep in mind when you when you drawing the diagram for the for the subject of anatomy. In the next video, we'll talk about that what color codes and how to approach the uh, the diagrams in the histology part. Thank you so much.